hello everyone welcome back to my new video in the series of Veritas solution and if you have been following this track uh, this is in continuation to the last one that we made on net backup so if you remember we did the installation of the net backup 7.7 .7, then we created the master and the media server and then we also created the policy and the basic storage and then we run certain backup and restore operation and we were able to recover using the net backup uh, policies too. Uh, in this uh, video, uh, I'll be emphasizing on the uh, one of the other option within net backup, which is the storage groups. So, which is which is very handy when it comes to if you have uh, multiple storage devices connected to a media server, you can uh, prioritize uh, which drive to be used first and accordingly you can run the backup and the restore option. Uh, just to refresh, uh, nothing has changed. I'm using the same two servers uh, for the net backup, which is a master in media, it is VNB. And uh, the other server, which is the client in this uh, whole scenario is the domain controller. Uh, so I'm running these two servers on my Hyper-V uh, but before we start and explore the storage groups uh, within NetBackup, I just want to briefly touch upon the uh, different commands option which are there in the NetBackup which can be very handy uh, and uh, fast forward a lot of processes in case uh, you're running uh, different operations. So just to show you that, let me go to the NetBackup server. And I'm going to expand this. Uh, let me open the command prompt. So this is the regular command prompt on the Windows Server 2008. Uh, to get into the net backup uh, command prompt, what you have to do is that you have to give the path that you have uh, where you have installed the net backup. So I'm give I'm going to give the path where I have I have installed my net backup. So let me put that. I just want to make sure that uh, you understand this one uh, because uh, there are a lot of things that you can do it by running the command so it is a good idea that you go through the administration uh, guide of net backup which can be very handy and especially when it comes to running these commands which can uh, uh, in case you're running in your large environment you will be able to overcome a lot of problems with these simple commands so I'm in the uh, net backup uh, path, uh, net backup installation path which I have given. So just to give you an example, an nb dev query is one of the commands that you can use uh, within net backup, uh, which will give you the state of your uh, uh, disk drive. So I'm just putting that command. So it's nb dev query list sts uh, uh, and you, and you just hint enter so as you can see that the device that we created last time was a basic disk and it can tell you the state of the disk that it is up so really cool and as I said you can go through other option by reading the administration uh, book on net backup too okay so let me close this one and come out of this and go back to the net backup administration console so this is the same one that we used last time so it is 7.7 .7 and the name of my domain is sherma.local and I'm on net backup server and it is acting as a master and a media server. Now to create the storage unit groups what you have to do is uh, from the left plane what you can do you can highlight storage unit group and you can right click and you uh, choose the button for new storage unit group. Now for this demo what I have done is that uh, I have created two disk drives storage x and storage uh, y which will be using for this one uh, so imagine if you in a in a media server if you have a tape uh, library connected with different tape drives what you can do is so you can assign a specific job to be run on a specific drive uh, which is a very good feature to within storage unit group so for the name and uh, let's give the name storage exit because these are the two drives demo was the last one that I made uh, and uh, storage x and y I'll be using for this one so 
you select this and you add them and I'm also gonna add storage Z2 and as you can see that you can change the priority you can move it up and down so in this case my first priority will be storage X so the first backup that we run will be on the storage X followed by storage Y and as you can see in the storage unit selection there are options you can have a prioritized failover round robin uh, it is very important to mention over here that a basic disk does not support the media server load balancing in case you want to utilize the media server load balancing you need to have the pure disk and which can you can uh, sorry which uh, advanced disk which can also use it with uh, storage lifecycle policy which I will cover maybe in my next video but for the time being we will cover uh, the storage unit group so for this purpose what I will do is that I will leave it to the prioritize so what does that mean is the one and it is mentioned over here choose the first storage unit in the list that is not busy down or out of media so in this case what I'm telling net backup is so when you run the backup the first priority will be the storage X so and followed by storage Y so it is very simple and you hit OK so the storage unit group has been created and the name of this one is uh, storage uh, XZ okay so let's do this way we'll create one more policy and if you have been following this uh, if you remember last time also we created one policy with the name policy one and for this one we'll create another policy and let's give the name policy two and as we did last time we'll configure the attribute schedule clients and backup selection so the policy type it's a windows base so we'll leave it to the default the policy storage will assign storage exit because that's where we will be running our backup and you can increase the priority if you want and then you can go to the schedule you can create a new schedule and uh, you can give any name so let's say test one you can also get assign the start window so I'm gonna just highlight anything and uh, I'm gonna hit OK and let's go to the client let me add the client and uh, in this case our client is the domain controller so let me add the domain controller and it is running 2008 R2 so let me select it's a 64 bit so I'll select that and hit OK and let me go to the backup selection hit new and I'll browse so just want to mention over here that for this test purpose uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll backup the folder that I have created in the C drive of my domain controller and the name of the folder is test1 so that is what will be backing up so let me just come out of this one here we go let me expand the C drive just want to show you that uh, I am on the uh, uh, net backup server and as you can see is right now the X drive and the Z drive is are both empty so if everything goes fine uh, the first backup should go under the X drive because that is what we have prioritized in our uh, configuration when we created the storage unit group. So we want to backup test one and let me hit OK. Let me hit OK again and I'll come out of this one. 
Okay, so the policy has been set, but as you remember that we have given a schedule, but we don't want that schedule. We don't want to wait for that schedule, so we want to run that. So I can right click on the policy too, and I can hit the manual backup. So the name of the policy schedule that we have given and the client name is listed here and we'll hit OK. So if you remember, if you want to check the activity of the instruction that we have given to the net backup, you can go to the activity monitor. And as you can see that uh, the green guy running and the state has is put in the active state. And let me double click into this one. You can go into the job overview. It gives all the information here. Uh, let's go to the detail status. As you can see that the process has been started. And we'll just wait till the uh, backup is created successfully. So as you can see that uh, it's big in writing. So shortly the process should be completed. Let me close this one and uh, we're just waiting for the process of backup to be completed. So it seems to be that the backup has been completed successfully. As you can see the blue guy uh, holding the arms up and we got the status zero. So let's check that by going on to the uh, storage unit group and we should have some information on the, as you can see that the backup has been created successfully and that's the information and uh, that should not be having anything because we gave the priority to the X drive. So let's go actually back in the storage unit group that we created. And what I want to do in now is I want to change the priority. So let me move the storage Z up and uh, hit OK. So what I want to prove in this case is that since I moved the storage uh, unit Z up in the priority list, so in case I'm running the backup again, it should not go to the X, it should go to the Z first. So let's try this one now. So let me go to the policy back again. maximize this and I'm gonna highlight again policy 2 and what I'll do is I'll hit the manual backup and I will hit OK again so if everything goes fine now the backup should be on the Z drive rather than on the X just because we change the priority 
so let's see if that works or not let's check the activity monitor again the state has been active it gives the policy name which is policy 2 the job schedule and the client which is in this case was the domain controller and let's see now another important fact I want to tell you is about the storage unit group is it also allows spanning of the volumes too. Uh, let me go to the master server. So under host properties you can go to the master server and you can double click your master server. And if you go into the media you can see that uh, it's allowed backup to the span disk. So what does that mean is to so say imagine if you have uh, uh, two or three or four drives connected to a media servers and in case uh, you have given a priority uh, on the disk so in case the first disk is uh, full uh, so in case the first disk is uh, coming to its full capacity and you're still having a backup job which is running it won't allow the backup job to uh, fail because of the feature of the uh, spanning disk uh, availability so you can it can the backup job can go to the second disk and complete and you will receive the successful notice and as you can see that uh, it is uh, selected by default in this case uh, another good feature to have okay so let me go back again to the activity monitor so the job is still active so what we are trying to prove in this case is that now we should get the backup in the z drive and hopefully we will be successful in this so we're just waiting for that to complete. Let me go into the detail status and as you can see that it is validating the image for client. And uh, the operation was completed successfully. So let me close this. We got the status zero and now let me go to the Z drive. Here we go. So as you can see that now we got our backup uh, where we wanted it to be. So very cool feature. I will recommend you should play with the storage unit group and uh, you will find them useful. In the next video we'll be talking about the advanced disk option and uh, how you can utilize and use the storage lifecycle policy to utilize that with, with the net backup uh,